Good evening. Hello. Hey, okay. It's a great pleasure, and uh, it's so nice to see a lot of the old good faces of my friends. Of course, from Jacobs, Nikol Yankarovich, and many people uh, who really helped me to really survive in this uh, HI community. I learned so much from all this work done by the pioneers. And uh, today, I'd like to give a condensed talk about my approach of the research, which may be unique because HCI community is really mainstream of the usability, user studies, how to make a system usable by the people. It's a very good uh, functional uh, motivations, but my work approach is very different. Neither user-driven or technology-driven. So that is the one theme I want to talk. Two months ago in Naples, I was in Milan with my team to present the latest project called Transform to the community of the design. And the Milan Design Week is all about furniture design. Their design is the beauty or aesthetics of frozen shy materials called furniture, table, or chairs. So surface really matters, but not the guts. So I try to bring the different cultures of the machine aesthetics or engine to make an interesting uh, conflict between traditional sense of design. So I'd like to show the videos of my project. So this happened in the beginning of the Milan, and the Milan Design Salone is the mainstream of the exhibit. But uh, we try to bring different beasts, it's an engine, technological engine, and the materials which dance computationally. That is a prototype of radical atoms I'm going to talk today. So this is a short introduction of the piece I presented. And uh, one of the important <coughs> motivations is juxtapose different uh, paradigm of design and technologies, or in other words, the aesthetics. I think that juxtaposing different principles is always a great way to create new inspirations. Other than sciences, another important uh, impedance mismatching, so that how to really bridge between two worlds Give a, lot, give a lot of the new insight. So this is one of the summary about how transdisciplinary research approach is fundamental. And uh, finding opportunity in conflict between disciplines. So rather than working in a homogeneous like a community which is governed by one principle, I always try to jump into the uh, borders or edge. There's a conflict between two different or three different uh, worlds. Also breaking down old paradigms to create new archetypes is a strategy of my research. I couldn't find a good words, but Aufheben seems to cross word. Who speaks German? Sprechen Deutsch? Good. So Aufheben is a German uh, Hegelian uh, philosophical word, but uh, using uh, conflict as opportunity to go to the one level higher. So that seems to be very, very important in my research and also to make Aufheben happens, the most important thing is a vision. So vision is the most important outcomes of my research. And uh, today, of course, technology really make a huge impact to the uh, society and the planet. And also the user's needs really matter to make uh, a meaningful service for the customers or users. But uh, our focus is much more higher level of the visions. For example, uh, Barnaba Bush Memex is a very, very powerful vision which inspired my hero, Dagen Gilbert, who came up with the vision of collective intelligence. The reason I care about those vision is the lifespan. I know you guys are using amazing machine in the pocket, but in two years, two years, maybe even one year, most of them are gone to the landfill. Even machines still work, but you want to get a new one, become obsolete. 
So obsolescence is already embedded into the design. Application also dramatically changed. Uh, people listen to the music, that's never changed. But LP, CD, MP3, and uh, cloud streaming. Dramatically, form of the application changes. But there are certain things which may do, does not change and last much longer the lifespan. So that's, uh, for example, uh, Ivan Sutherland Ultimate Display, which also inspired our work, is kind of the vision. So this diagram shows my battle against Pixel Empire in the past 20 years. Still Pixel dominates this planet. Fundamental information is under the water. So this is a GUI empire. And uh, all the information you deal with with machine, including uh, computers, tablet, smartphone, are intangible pixels. You cannot do anything using your body because there's no substance. So you have to depend on the remote control, like a mouse, keyboard, or even touch screen. You're not touching the information. You're just touching the surface, the water levels. But the information is bottom of the waters. So, of course, there's no tactile sensations. You cannot use any dexterity of your hands. So that's the reason, almost 18 years ago, I started at 100 bits when I came to uh, MIT. Uh, I started a new project called 100 bits by physically embodying digital information. So you can see white part above the water, there's a white portion. That is a physically embodied portion of information. Once you physically embody, you can grasp, manipulate using your hands, no ambiguity. However, after uh, 18 years, we stuck because this white part is very shy, frozen, rigid, atomous. So this, this kind of pixel dance behind the thick glass of a computer screen if you write a program. But the materials, like this metals or desk or plastic, Never dance, never transform, never change the property like a stiffness. That sucks. Because computer, computer is very dynamic under the waters. But the asynchrony between physically embodied portion and dynamic computation, computational part creates a lot of issue of asynchrony. That's the reason we decided to hack the materials, reinvent the new future materials called radical atoms, which transform conform and inform. So today I'd like to introduce whole the story of 20 years of the battles against pixel empires using a lot of the examples. So for me, most important question is how to represent information. Representation matters because representation comes from implicit mental operators. If you use a mathematical equation or logic, you can apply all the logical operators in linear way. How many people are visual thinker? How many people have sketchbook now? Okay, I keep sketching. So all the imagery is spatial. You can manipulate using a physical proximity of a chunk. That's totally different computations or inference. But the linear equations and the visual thinking is incompatible. So choosing long representation really creates a lot of the problems. But the inventing a new representation which affords both physical and the digital like affordance is something I'm very much interested in. So Orari is a great example because one of the best beautiful representation of knowledge about solar system. But the beauty is the interface of this hand crank. How many people saw the Orari in the museum? If you go to Historic Scientific Instruments Museum, you will see so many beautiful artifact representation which were abandoned by replaced by digital computers or photons. But this representation has a power because this handles is an interface to your hands. And once you start rotating the solar system, your kinesthesia, bone, muscle, nervous system is completely sync with the models. There's no ambiguity why four seasons exist on this planet, why eclipse happens. This tight coupling of the bodies into the machine or representation, something I really think important and completely missing in current pixel empire because too abstract. 
So many people work about UbiConf, inspired by Mark Weiser's visions, and uh, but still, information is under the water. And many people try to bridge using RFID or GPS, or position, location, all the stuff. But I took the approach called Tangibits. Physically embody the digital information and the computation so that you can directly manipulate the information. So representation and the controls become the same. Today, pixel representation, this is a control, completely separated. But once information is physically embodied, you can naturally grab it, touch it. So blurring the boundary between representation and the control is one of the contributions of tundra bits. And uh, this is a paper uh, we uh, submitted to Kai 97 and it was almost rejected. But there's a hero, Mark Weiser, rescued this paper. But the later he sent to me a really nice uh, personal message saying, this is a vision of computation of the 21st century. And even he proposed to use tundra bits replacing uh, UbiComp because UbiComp was abused. So many people misuse the UbiComp for attaching everything. But his spirit of UbiComp is not a bunch of the machine everywhere, more closer to the philosophy of tangible bits. So I really owe him a lot. So let me show one first example of tangible bits. Uh, it's called music bottles. So this is a project not for the utility or functionalities, but the more emotional experience or aesthetics. And the most important thing is all the glass bottles was blown in that glass blowing studios and the sand blasted. But uh, once it's dropped on the floor, it's over. You can't reboot, you can't recreate, because one of a kind. Uh, that's a beauty, same as the life of ours. And uh, also photons dance randomly in a frosty glass. And uh, so I try to really extend. Everybody knows the glass bottles. People use 4,000 years putting all the precious things. So how to stretch, extend the meaning and affordance of the container, glass bottles, to digital domain is one of the motivations. And also this became a product helping uh, medications. Elderly people can remember all the medicines they have to take, but the opening closing can be tracked, then remind patients or medical doctors or pharmacy for refilling timing, or kids living far away. But this project was envisioned not for the music, but the totally different reasons. I have a dream to give a present of weather bottles for my mom, who lives in Sapporo City, north part of Japan. And uh, when she wakes up, uh, I want her to open the blue glass bottles, which tell her about weather of today. So today is a fine day. She cooked for me many, many times, opening soy sauce bottles. Opening soy sauce bottles, the smell coming out. That's a word she understands. I never wanted her to learn cryptic language designed by uh, Google or Apple or Microsoft engineers, like uh, Emacs, Esk sequence stuff. Has nothing to do with her life. She never touched any machine in her life. But uh, uh, I thought we can design something based on that idea. But uh, she passed away in 1998. That's the reason I put uh, a music uh, instead of the weather forecast. 
Also, Mike Weiser passed away in this year, and he also talked about translucent, transparent interface. So that's a tribute to my mom and also Mark. So let me show the maybe most comprehensive examples of a hundred bits done by Dr. John Kofura. He's my first PhD student. Also, he contributed to the Milo Report, uh, the famous movie. And is again intended for professional use this time in the field of architecture and urban plan. Urban floors, wire frame. So this wireframe building is a white part of the iceberg. So tip of the iceberg, physically embodied on the tables. But uh, this desktop is a water level. Under the water, all the computation is going. So putting a buildings, it casts shadows. But this shadow is not optical shadow, but the computational shadow. So that moving the hands of the clock, you can change the time so that you can explore, for example, inter-shadow problems. So any display can be also the controller by reversing. That's the idea John and I came up with. And also, in addition to the shadows, you can also think about light reflection. This building is made of beautiful uh, bricks, very Boston. But I was in San Jose uh, two weeks ago. All this, many of the buildings is grassy, so reflection light is also very, very sophisticated. And also, you can explore the different dimensions, like uh, wind movement. So, in the urban canyon, sometimes the wind is so strong, so you can't open the doors or keep rotating. So, this is basically Navier's toxic equation. How many people make it here? No make it. Okay, fluid dynamics is so beautiful, and uh, every time you grab the move the building, boundary condition is changed, then fed into the underwater Navier's toxic equation, then recompute, then reproject. But you can naturally using two hands or six hands if the three colleagues are at the table and the space multiplex. Also, once you grab and move, there's no ambiguities, no latency, no parallax. It's totally different from the graphics. Even digital shadow has certain delay because of tactile confirmations make very strong uh, communications about what you have done. So, this is an uh, example of a uh, hundred bits, but unfortunately, the building, white building model, is frozen, shy. I can't computationally change the height or shape because it's a dead materials. Also, we tackle different uh, materials for form giving. That's the clay or sand, and uh, clay is a very powerful media for landscape design. So for the landscape designer, we made a system called illuminating clay, and also the sandscape using sand. So designer can sculpt for the aesthetics or beauty using a light side of grain, but also you can make a computational analysis. So this is an exhibit for our aesthetic centers. So I'd like to show the short video clip. So you can give a form. It's like a kids play with a sandbox. It's very natural, of course, everybody play. But now you see the vector. This is a water drainage. Vector, direction, water run down. Also color shows the speed, so that, that inform about erosions. So digital elevation, shadow, also you can know which plants or tree can survive, getting enough photons all over the year. All the computation can happen while you're changing the form. So this is another example of tundra bits. You can directly manipulate with tactile feedback, give a form, change a form, but also computational information coming through the sand. However, these sands are also frozen and shy. Oh, by the way, how many people in the movie frozen? It's amazing. My girls keep singing <laughs> every day. But anyway, these are frozen, shy materials which doesn't have any computational memory. So that uh, that reason we decided to go to the next endeavor called Radical Atoms, because how to make materials dance, pixel dance, if you write a chord behind the thick glass. But I want to make materials dance, transform, also changing property. 
So this is a early prototype of shape display by done by Daniel Reitzinger. You can directly manipulate pushing, pulling, but also you can explore different uh, gesture interface to issue the command in a more bigger area. So this uh, invention of the new information representation, so that also we are exploring new interactions. So timescape is an example to show the new rendering. Rendering used to be pixel behind the computer screen, the screen. But now, information can be rendered both physical and the pixel. But they are connected. They are one thing. So if you make a change, imagine mountain building or erosion. So you can really explore the temporal aspect of the uh, form changing. Also, you can directly manipulate. You can also use the middle gesture. This is a whole vocabulary of interaction are being invented also changes the meaning of the uh, rendering. So define the gravity of the pixel is one of the important theme. And uh, then we went to the next system called Inform, which has much more higher resolution of the pins, but also we explore the new kind of application, which people never seen. And we made this video public last November, became viral. I think a two million megawatts. How many people saw this video? Good. So my old uh, like, uh, community was CSCW, Remote Collaborations. Before I came to MIT, I did a lot of video-mediated uh, remote collaborations. So I tried to revisit that world with my students, because now you can physically scan, but also re-embody your body. So you can exist in a remote place. Also, this red ball is old materials, inert materials, shy materials. This white pin are radical atoms. But uh, our shape display is not a display. It's a machine robot which actuate, inference, move, push, or kick all the materials. So, so this intermaterial interaction between white pins and the red balls are very, very important implication to go beyond notion of the information display. We are very much interested about design and the form giving and other discussion. This very important uh, clip shows the uh, intermaterial interaction. Shy red balls are pushed by the white pins. So all generation, new generation can dance together on the same stage. This is another way to grab your attention. So, you know the affordance, or passive visual affordance in GUI, but now you can literally use physical affordance, gravity, Newton physics, so that you can really change the form, surface, of the, say, desktop, whatever. That really afford certain mechanical movement. Also, you can give a form using a whole gesture or touch, or some classic interaction technique borrowing from the GUI. So this is a color palette. You can choose whatever color, then paint. So form giving and interaction dramatically change. Here now you see all the financial data, mathematical data become tangible. But they are alive. It's not a dead materials. It's reflecting real-time computation under the water. So now all the mathematical equation have a physical form. So you can put a pinpoint ball to experiment how steep the slope is. That's totally different dimensions of the understanding. Also, we started exploring different dimensions. This is crazy. More than 1,000 pins moving constantly. This is another artistic expression, which inspired by the Asia, which lead to the final project, which we call Transform. Also, I want to show some interesting artistic explorations of the project. So, Asia inspired us a lot. So this is our life in the maze, 
corporate means or whatever. But the Nishina showed the relative movement of the balls and also the entire structures. So don't ask me why. This is art. <laughs> so this is one stream of the approach to radical atoms using a shape display, but that's beyond display. But also we are hacking the materials and uh, we are now making materials programmable. So I'd like to show the uh, short video clip of the new e, which we presented in the last uh, WIST conference. So a lot of the, this is very condensed, very fast. So, but uh, I hope you have a chance to read the paper. You can really program all the pattern of transformation using a pneumatic, uh, elastic, non-elastic portion, combination, printing, multi-layer, you can really program the pattern of the transformations. And uh, this is a uh, morphing form examples. So using air as a means to make all the transformation. But the pattern of transformation is pre-programmed. Total mass constant, shadow change the height of the building. This is homage to the app. Also, you can hide multi-layer of transformation. The lot of the technique, all the small pattern, give a new texture to the steering wheel of the car driver, for example. Also, the grip of the game machine can communicate in a much more richer way. And you can do 3D printing. So we invented a new process of lithography to really create all these materials. So it's very messy, but we really enjoy all the fabrication because now all these tools become much more easy to access and available. So this is an example of the soft organic materials, which we call problem materials. Also, we did another project uh, for jamming, so that you can change stiffness, uh, which we presented last TI conference. And also, we are using biological materials. So there's a lot of interesting approach to make materials dance, transform, <coughs> conform, inform. But I'd like to come back to the transform system, because that is most uh, kind of elaborated system for the expression. So I'd like to show the video clip from uh, Milan. So this is a kind of challenge to the traditional notion of the materials. Because designer have to choose one of two materials. One, shy frozen materials, like a wood, plastic, or metals. Like a chair is made of those frozen materials. Or dynamic materials, but a pixel stuck behind the 2D screen. There's no substance. You cannot really feel or affect because it's a pixel. So this is a third type of new material called radical atoms. It's fully computational. You can control precisely, but physical, tangible. It can push other materials. And uh, also intermaterial interaction, coexistence of the New materials, white pins, and old materials and the red balls open the door to the new dimension of the design. So we told a story showing uh, this uh, system about the battles between nature and the machine. But this is one of the southern stories people can tell. So real challenges, this is the kind of invention of the paintings. So now new white canvas. What kind of art piece you want to really create? What kind of story you really want to tell? So that's a challenge I talked in Milan. So I think the uh, important thing is the approach of transdisciplinary and seamless perfect integration of art, design, science, engineering is impossible. Fundamentally, each discipline has a different value system. So seemingly contrasting fields, but when you brought all together, that inform each other through the collision of the idea. Though the collision is something very important. Danger is if you think pixel is beautiful, pixel is perfect, goo is perfect, it's a dead end. Evolution completely stop. But once you really have a dream to go beyond current paradigms, so transform into new dimension greater than each alone. And also important thing, transmute beyond any preconceived expectation. Without this, it's never stick. 
So I think this is a very famous phrase, the future is not to predict but to invent by Alan Kay. And actually Alan Kay and Nicholas had hunted me in 1994 in Atlanta. They invited me to come to MIT and it's exactly 20 years later. But uh, to invent the most important driving force is not a technology or not the user's needs, but the vision. But the vision is not enough. Obviously, we have to have a vision. We have to envision, we have to dream the exciting futures. But also we have to embody, we have to materialize to test or let other people express. To do so, we have to speak the language of computer science, mechanical engineering, or electronics, or product design, all this language to materialize. But in the end, it has to inspire. That's the domain of the art. If there's no aesthetics, no profound message, people don't care. Just forget and send to the landfills, like a smartphone in your pocket, which you have to say goodbye in a few years. So I think how to really make vision driven, but the materials, but the reach the level to inspire people is something very, very important. So envision, embody, inspire is fundamental guiding principle of my research. So I'd like to uh, thank to all of you who came to this talk, uh, spending a precious time, but especially uh, Professor Rob Jacob, he's my old good friend, and he encouraged me a lot. And uh, even how many papers got rejected by Kai, because no user study, but it's okay. And uh, so today, uh, it's great that finally I could talk my reflection of past 20 years of the battles uh, to uh, Pixel Empire, also uh, academic communities. But um, I have a plan of the 2050s. I'm supposed to go to different places, a bit more higher altitude. <laughs> Uh, some students said it could be also negative space. It heavily depends. Uh, but the most important message all together, 2100, there's no exceptions. And uh, sorry for that, but the reality is. So the reason is we think about the future. So 2200 is a long future. But uh, there's a question I've been asking myself, my students. Also, I want to share with my colleagues. You guys, it's if you're a creator, if you're a builder, if you're the maker, what do you want to leave for those living in 2200? How do you want to be remembered? For me, it's a vision, not an artifact, not a machine. So 2200 is a symbol of the futures. Next quarter, or happy retirement, or our death, is not the end of the future, but it's the beginning of the eternal future for which we are all responsible for. So thank you very much for your kind of attention. <laughs>